In this video, artist Sarah Meredith demonstrates techniques in screen printing to the members of Northside Art Association. Sarah Meredith works in textiles, dyeing, quilting, and embellishing fabrics. She prefers to work with silks and rayon, which yield beautiful colors and have a soft sheen. Sarah is co-owner of Framations Art Gallery in St. Charles, Missouri, and has a BA in Art from Truman State University with a focus in fibers. Learn more about fiber artist Sarah Meredith on her website at sarahmeredith.com. I have a degree in fibers, um, so there are certain things that I learned, and there's, there's, there's always good things you learn when you have a nice studio, and then you get out of that studio and you realize you can't always do them at home. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was going to college, we had a great studio, you know, all this great equipment, I learned um, photo emulsion, which is the more traditional uh, form of screen printing, what most people are talking about when they talk about screen printing. I thought, well, what can I do at home that I can do at lower cost, you know, the chemicals, that's safer, not toxic, things like that. It's similar to a laminator. It's just a machine that basically just has a belt and a light bulb. Um, and you can buy these films, these screens, and you can put them on top of a um, carbon photocopy and it goes through and it pulls off a layer of basically a, uh, basically like a plastic layer um, off of the screen. So you can make simple screens that way. That's the kind of screen that I use most often if I'm printing. Um, but from there, you know, I wanted to find other things I can do because obviously these screens cost something and the white parts can be reused. But, you know, every time you make one of these screens, you can't reuse it for something else. So sometimes it's nice to be able to find um, different ways that you can reuse screens to get similar effects um, and be able to do it yourself with lower cost also. So basically one thing you can do, um, and this is just, these are stretcher bars like you would use for a canvas that are cut down to size. And then this is just a very inexpensive uh, polyester, like what you might think of when you, when you see like uh, window screens, window mesh, that kind of thing. Um, so it's a very inexpensive um, type of material that's stretched, so you can see on my staples, just like you would do with a canvas. Um, so then the next step from there <coughs> is to waterproof it using tape. And I'm not going to go through and do this one just because it'll take a little bit too long. Um, but basically, before you use a screen, you'd want to make it so that it's going to last a long time. So you want to waterproof it as best you can using duct tape or Gorilla Tape. Um, Gorilla Tape is really good because, I don't know where I read it, but somewhere I read that um, with duct tape, it needs to sit for like 12 to 24 hours kind of for the adhesives to cure to really be waterproof. But supposedly Gorilla Tape, you can put it on there and it's ready to go. So you can start using it right away. So this is just a very simple screen that I made using um, stretcher bars cut to size. And obviously you can buy standard size, like if you wanted to buy eight by eight stretcher bars, you could buy those and put it together yourself. Um, this is a screen I made using a very cheap plastic eight by 10 frame. So it's just same thing here, where you have the frame part and then I added the fabric to it, stapled it. Um, actually I just did this one last night. <laughs> um, so, um, so basically just added the tape to make it waterproof before adding the image. So a couple different things you can do using these types of screens that are very simple. Um, and this was one when I was, um, when I was still in college and getting ready to do my uh, BA show, I did the entire show um, using designs I made with uh, contact paper. So this is just contact paper you buy for your shelves. Um, you can draw a design on there, cut it out with a sharp blade. And as long as you have a design that is connected, basically, you don't want to cut out a whole big section. And then, because if you cut, like if I were to cut this part out, I'd have to adhere this part to the screen. It might not be quite as sturdy. But this way, this is all one continuous piece. Um, and like I said, I did my entire BA show um, with contact paper designs, and then they were then printed and uh, a lot of sewing and things involved also. 
But this is just a clear contact paper, and we'll see if this actually comes off all at once. I had a bad old roll of contact paper recently, and I couldn't get the paper off. So this is just the clear, and really you could use any kind of contact paper as long as it's smooth. And I'm just going to lay this on my screen. And from this side, I'm going to press it down, get it as smooth as I can. And then I'm going to lay it down here also and smooth it from the other side. Because you want to make sure that you get that on there really nice and smooth. Because you don't want the paint that you're pressing through there to go under there. And basically, most of the printing that I do is on fabric. And when you print on fabric, you want to have a surface that has a little bit of give to it. Because you're pushing not just on top of the, the fabric, but you're really actually pushing the paint sort of into the fabric because you're really pushing into it. So this is just a piece of wood. I think it's like a half-inch plywood. And this just has um, a piece of, I think it's a three inch foam that you can buy at any craft store and just has fabric stretched around it and stapled. It's, a, it's really very simple. You don't have to have something quite this thick, um, but this is a good size board for me because it is portable, but it's also something that, I mean, I really would never print anything larger than this for anything that I'm doing for my purposes. So this works pretty well. So. For this screen, and I'm just using some scrap pieces of fabric, this is all stuff that's just um, dyed pieces I've had left over from other things. Um, and anytime you print on fabric, you really want to pin down your fabric to keep it in place, because the last thing you want is to push across it and have it do that. <clears throat> now paper is obviously going to be different, and really anything, pretty well anything that you do printing-wise on fabric, you could do the same techniques on paper. You might use a different type of paint. Um, what I'm going to use is actually um, intended for fabric. So it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit thinner or softer paint. And then it dries um, a little bit differently than what, like if you were using acrylic, for instance. And I did just recently realize, too, I hadn't used uh, for a long time, I had used I don't have any original containers here. Um, a brand called Versatex, and then I just recently bought some Speedball screen printing ink. And this is stuff that you can get um, at I know Hobby Lobby carries some printing supplies. And I did notice that the Speedball is actually a stiffer. Um, it ends up stiffer on the surface. Well, it depends on what you're using it for. Um, like, say, for instance, if you were going to do a design on T-shirts, I mean, overall, I think generally a softer surface is going to be better if you're doing something wearable. Um, but if you're doing something as a wall hanging, it might not matter. Or you might want something a little bit stiffer. So I'm just going to let you guys pass these around. Um, this is with one that's a little bit softer. What's the brand? Um, that one is Versatex, which that's one that I usually order. And then this is the speedball. You can, yeah, you can just kind of see the lines. And this different. is all washable, huh? Uh-huh. Now, when you print on fabric and you're using um, actual fabric printing paints, um, you will want to heat set them with an iron um, to make them last longer, especially if you're making something wearable. Um, I did find out about a year or so ago I made um, a T-shirt for my husband. And I didn't take the time to heat set it as I should have. And after, I mean, it's probably been washed, you know, 30, 40 times since then. And it started to fade a little bit. So um, it should have lasted a little bit longer. And I just at the time didn't take enough time to really iron it very well. So, um, so that is something that's important. And that's a little bit different than um, what you would do with paper also. Do you color those fabrics too? That you're using? Mm-hmm. Yeah, these are all hand dyed fabrics. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a squeegee, and I've got a few different ones here just so you can kind of see the different um, different types. I said so far most of these materials that I showed you are things you can pick up at you know Hobby Lobby, Michaels, things like that if you're interested in trying something at home. So for this one, and this is just um, some paint that I mixed up at home. And one thing I've noticed recently too is some of these um, some of these.
of these paints are definitely different consistencies. So this is some that's a little bit thinner. So since it's thinner, I don't want to go through this, go over this too much. So what are you using there? What is that? Is that this is the fabric paint. <coughs> so see, this one's a little thinner. So it actually went on there kind of thick since I went over it twice. So is it good to go over it twice or not? Um, with thinner paints, like you can see that has some bubbles to mm. it. So that's actually a little thicker than what I'd want if it was something wearable especially. Um, but what you can do with that is just let it sit and depending on how thick the paint is, it, you know, it can take a little bit longer for it to dry. Um, but then once it's dry, then it would need to be heat set, especially for wearables. Um, so that's one way that you can do simple designs. Um, and then this one, using the same type of screen that I started with, I'm just gonna put this down went through a little bit. The only time I'd say you wouldn't want to pin down fabric for printing is if you're doing a t-shirt or some kind of wearable where you know you don't want to go through one side to the other. Um, usually when you have something like that you're going to put something between like you, you can get um, like cardboard t-shirt forms things like that any place that sells printing um, stuff so like Hobby Lobby even like I think Joann's and Michael's sell some of that kind of stuff too. Um, so if you have something that's two-sided, um, you'd want to use something in between. Um, now this, like I said, this is a screen that I made from a very inexpensive 8x10 um, plastic frame. So this one's plastic, it's not wood. So it was stretched the same way. Now, what's different about this one is how the image is on there. This is using um, this stuff, which is also something you can get at Hobby Lobby or a lot of other craft stores. Um, Speedball makes a product called Screen Drawing Fluid. And it's really fun stuff to play with. This is a bright green color, actually kind of similar to what this is. So what you do is you paint it on. And this is one I did just last night. I have not even tested the screen yet, so we'll see how it works. Um, so everything that's not red was originally painted green. Um, so I painted it from this side because that was the side that I wanted it to look like when I print it. So I painted the green on, and then it took probably a couple hours for it to dry thoroughly. Um, because with that, you really want to make sure that you get it on thick enough so that when you coat the screen with the red stuff, this, it's called screen filler, and they both they come in bottles this size. Because um, once the, the screen drawing fluid dries, um, then you coat the entire thing. So I think I used to this one, because that was, yeah, it was this one. Uh, and you just, you coat it using the red material, which is the filler, and it fills in everything that you didn't paint. So basically, whatever you paint is your positive area that you're going to print eventually. When you put your green paint on, did you pull it off? Well, actually, once the red dries completely, um, this, once it's dry, it becomes waterproof. And then what you do is you put the entire screen under warm water okay. and, like, with a sponge, you and rub off green. the green. Yeah. So the green, um, the first step, the green stuff, that is uh, water resistant. So, or Soluble. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Um, so that, like, if you mess up, you could scrub away an area of it before you do the the red part. Um, so it's it's a basically it's a two step process, and then just cleaning the screen afterwards. So, like I said, I have not tested the screen yet, so we'll see. We'll see how it works. Block in your view? Yeah, but that's. You're the star. <laughs> okay. Do you need something? No. Okay. I just do a lot of leaning. Oops. Okay. So now this white, like I said, this, this speedball paint is a little bit thicker, so it actually prints a little bit differently, too. 
So this was one pass Ooh, with a speed ball. Really cool. yeah. yeah. That's really cool. So, so this stuff is really fun because what's neat though is you could use the screen until you're tired of it or you know keep it around, but you can also reclaim the screen. Um, Speedball also makes um, a solution to remove everything from your screen. So I'm not sure how long you can leave a screen on before it really won't come off because I did have one that I left on for several years and I could not get the entire surface clean. It left kind of some splotches in there where it was on thicker, I think. Um, so I would say if you, if you make a screen like this, maybe within a year or so, you can probably still clean it. So it's nice for, you know, doing quite a few prints. Um, yeah. How quick would you need to wash those at work? Um, with, most of the, with most of the fabric paint, um, these can sit for a little while before they're cleaned and I can still scrub them. Now, if you do anything, like if you were to do prints on paper and you wanted to use acrylic paint, it's going to dry a lot faster. So yeah, you don't want to leave it sit for so long that it dries because it is going to clog up the screen. Usually, I mean, you can tell, I don't know if you can see behind there, you can usually mm -hmm. see through where there's no paint clogs. But like when I'm close enough, I can see where there's areas where there's paint in there. Um, and it would be more evident too if I'd used a, a color other than white, but I wanted it to really show up on the colors here. So, but yeah, normally you would want to, you know, I'd say within 20 minutes or so, you know, get that, get the screens clean. To try this out the other day. So these are just watercolor crayons. So this is something that you can do. Um, it's a little bit different. So basically you're going to draw di directly on the screen. And we're going to use where's my stuff at? Um, gel medium. And it's going to transfer it onto the fabric using that. Hmm. So it's a very different process. And this is going to create more of a, a little bit more of a stiffer uh, feel to the fabric also, the gel medium. And you can use that on paper also? Yeah. Yeah, it would be, yeah, you could use that on paper also. So this should not whenever you want. What's going to happen? I, I'm not. It basically is going to wet the watercolor crayon, basically, and make it more of a waterproof. No. So you'll have to probably have to push pretty hard. So it's not going to, you know, like watercolor crayon will spread out, you know, once it's wet, but it won't do that with this gel medium? If you, now with this one, I bought a thicker gel medium this time. I've used thinner ones and they all do some, they all act a little bit differently. Um, I did find with this one pass and you get, usually get the image. Um, if you do more than that, it will really start to bleed out. Does it matter what color you use for what she's doing? Um, no. It doesn't? I don't think so. I think I've got... Uh, I'm going to use this one, I think. So today I'm drawing on... Hey, what did you do? To, yeah. to maybe do it really hard, and now I busted the crown. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And you don't want that graphic to show over your face. Okay. No? Oh, yeah. Nice round of applause for Miss Judy Repke. <laughs> You don't even know what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> she had the guts to volunteer. That's what's, that's what's important. So the gel medium is going to cover what the crayon doesn't? Not the gel medium. Well, because it's regular. Um, it's just basically it's white. It's going to dry clear. So it's going to push the watercolor through, and I'm actually going to try this first on paper and just see what it looks like, because it'll show up better on the white paper. Like I said, I wouldn't normally use a screen that's not... Um, Are you putting down on uh, fabric again? I'm actually first going to do this on paper, okay. so it's probably going to it's probably going to look a little thick on there, because I'm using a thicker gel medium 
I mean, you can kind of see it's pretty, it's a, it's a thicker one. So we're going to see what this looks like after one pass on paper. Because with fabric, one pass, it pretty well. So you can see. Oh, okay. So now what happens then, so like on paper, you probably wouldn't notice as much of a difference with um, the feel of it. Because obviously the paper already has um, the stiffness to it. But now, it probably won't show up quite as dark on this because this is a darker with darker fabric. But we're going to see what this looks like. So this is a second pass. So you only want to go over that one time. You can't go back and... Oh, yeah. So that's the oh, second nice. one. And this is on a darker fabric, so it doesn't show up quite as much. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, the more you go over it, the more it's going to kind of loosen out the colors and spread out more. And since this is a gel medium, that's going to make my fabric a little bit stiffer. So, like, this would be something that I would use more for, like, a wall hanging, not for a wearable necessarily, because it's going to dry a little bit thicker. That over there. It sort of looks white in the middle. Now, that, that's going to be gone. That should dry clear. Because yeah, okay. oh, with the gel medium, because, okay. like, if you add that to acrylic paint, it would have the same effect where it should be down. If you just slid it over mm -hmm. and uh, repeated it. Do you want to try it? Yeah. Okay. So usually hold it at the top where you're going away from, and you want to push it down at a pretty good, there you go, pressure, and just, there you go. I'm going to take this. Let's go my goop on it. And that was... Just gel. a matte gel. Mm -hmm. So, oops, okay. I'm all stuck together. So, like I said, I've used a thinner gel medium before, and I, I do think the thinner works a little bit better, but I kind of wanted to try something different. Mm -hmm. So, I was just thinking about it. If I tried it, I'd make lots of people shapes. And, oh, cool. like a crab. Mm -hmm. Lots of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you reuse that gel then? What that's on here? Uh -huh. Well, I, I scooped some off of here. It does have a little bit of a red cast to it, but if I use that again, I'm only using it for this, and I can pretty well mix that in. I don't think that would cause me any problems because it's such a small amount in there. So, so is this, does it keep getting darker and darker, you're saying? The, the um, transfer? I don't, I don't think this is going to really get much darker, but it's going to get looser. Because oh, yeah. the more it's wetted, yeah. it's going to get, and I think you'll, you would see that, I think you would see it more with, if you use a thinner, it's going to bleed a little bit more, so that's why I wanted to try the thicker to see, because I think it, I mean, I think it held the shape here better with the thicker, but then you do end up, you see on the, you can kind of see on the paper, there's some texture to it too, mm -hmm. so it kind of just depends what, what texture you might like, if that would work good for you or not. What? It would be called a collagraph. Basically, a collagraph is anything you make that uh, would be a collage. So I was trying to make this a little more, more simplified so it's really easy to see what I'm doing. So this is more of a relief, so there's definite spaces in between. And this way, there's all one flat surface. Because um, I'm going to use um, the same kind of brayer for this and the next type of printing. These are going to be two kinds of printing that don't require any screen at all. Um, so these are things you might have, you know, supplies at home you could do for. Um, so this is just foam that I've cut out with an X-Acto blade and then glued down to a piece of map board. Um, so like I said, you could do, if you wanted to do a collage and have all kinds of irregular um, layers to it and different um, textures and shapes, um, you could definitely do that. But I would say you'd need to use a foam roller or a paintbrush to apply your paint. Because if I had all kinds of different uneven, I wouldn't be able to use this. So, um, so a foam roller you could do um, if you had an uneven collage. But like let's say if you wanted to put down, you know, feathers and lace and different things, then you could do that too. And this, the process would be similar. You would just use a different type of ruler or brush to apply paint for it. So what I'm going to do, and I think I'm going to use fabric on this, but you can do the same thing with paper. Is that like a wood cut only easier? Yeah. 
Yeah, if you've ever done a linoleum block or wood cut, <laughs> same basic idea. It's just with this, you can use anything you want and glue the pieces on. So instead of cutting out, you're adding to the surface in this case. Uh, what I have down here on the table is just a piece of plexiglass that I'm going to use to roll out my paint. So I'm just going to use some white. Nora, you might be able to use some of those sheets of glass. <laughs> okay. Is that just tempera? This is... Um, this is still um, fabric paint, but okay. you could do temper or acrylic if you want to do on paper. Um, I kind of played around with both with this on paper and with fabric, and I thought because this is a relief and I can really press the fabric on there, I want to show show you how that works. So I'm going to use the roller. Generally speaking, if you are printing with fabric, you want to make sure your fabric is ironed and ready to go. These have been kind of moved since they've been ironed, so they're not. So I do have an extra brayer that's clean, except for the threads on there. So that's one way that you can use to press down on the surface, or since this is a relief, I can use my hands and really, really press the fabric down. Can you do it the other way and use it more as a scoop? Mm-hmm. Actually, I tried this with both and I felt like if I did it this way, it got some cleaner edges. So that was the... Mm -hmm with the white, so you can see, and then that one, I didn't get it on as thick. Mm -hmm. Well, you could also apply um, paint with a foam brush or a regular paintbrush also, and you could do every one of these a different color, too. Okay. And the thickness is your own preference, right? How much, you, yeah. how much paint you put on? Yeah. Now, the fabric paint, I don't think, goes on nearly as thick as, uh, well, it's a thinner paint in general, so when you roll it out, it's a little bit th thinner than what uh, like acrylic paint might be or a tempera. But I think part of that is because since it's designed for fabric, it's a little bit thinner so it goes more into the threads a little bit into the fabric. So that would be considered a collagraph or a relief. You could call it either one. Um, and like I said, you could use pretty much anything you could think of um, to do this similar type of printing. This is another thing you can make at home. And it's a gelatin and what? It's just gelatin and water. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> there's, there's different recipes for how to make these, um, and this one is simply gelatin and water. Um, I had it really tested to see how long these last. Eventually they will, you know, if you keep it in the fridge, it's going to mold. Visible proportion. Gelatin? Yeah. It's just gelatin and some jello. So if you don't do the demo, we could have dessert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would taste very good. It's just gelatin and water. Um, oh, but can she bake cakes? <laughs> this is, um, this is three cups of water. For every cup of water you use, you use two packets of gelatin. So like, 
from what I've seen, gelatin comes in either a small box that has four packets in it or a big box that has like 16, something like that. Okay. So you one, would... One cup of water for two packs? Yes. Um, and what you do when you make it is whatever amount of water you use um, will should be proportional to the size you're going to do. So you can test out with a pan. I just use basically an 8-inch cake pan to make this. Um, you don't coat it or anything before you do it. Um, whatever amount of water you decide to use, you use half of it cold and half of it hot. Or it's supposed to be boiling. So you mix the gelatin in the cold water, all of the gelatin in the cold water first, and then you add the hot water. Um, so like what I did was I mixed up the cold, added it to my pan, and then added the hot water. Um, and then it takes, if you put it directly in the fridge, it takes, I'm not sure, at least two, three hours, I think, to set fully. Um, and then you can run, like I used a small spatula, a rubber spatula, ran it around the edges, and then you just kind of break suction on the bottom, and then you can pop it out. You do have to keep it in the refrigerator when you're not using it, wrapped in uh, plastic wrap. Um, but what's fun is it's another surface that has some lift to it, so you can put items on top of it to kind of block off areas. So um, I've just brought some fabric pieces, some twine, some lace, so I'm just going to show you a couple things. Um, now this is still using uh, fabric paint. I do have um, some uh, acrylic paint too, but I'm just going to put this on first for a light color. I'm just going to use some paper here. And I'm just going to use my hands this first time. Now you have to be a thin paper to take a print. I, if you, I don't so think you so. used a watercolor paper, like a 140 pound. I would say you'd probably need to use, just make sure your paint's on heavy enough. Um, now what I, what I noticed just from, I haven't done this as much as the other types, um, oh, is that, um, the first few times I tried it with fabric, I had a harder time getting the paint thick enough. There's, there's something about the surface and the fabric, it just wasn't working the same as, um, with paper. I had more fun with it with paper. Um, but then what's interesting is then you also have the inverse. <laughs> when you take those items off, then you can also pick them up <laughs> on a different piece of paper. So you can get the reverse like that. Oh, I like that. So with this one, you actually pick up the texture, like where this was, you really see the texture because that's where it was pressed into the paint down there. So then what the other thing you can do, I'm just going to add, this is, this is just um, black acrylic. Did you make that in a cake pan? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. The second one. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try this. Now I haven't marked the paper to register anything to get that perfectly on there. So we're going to see. So now I've layered two on there. And then now this time I'm going to take these off and put more textured image on this one. Um. So now 
I see the black on top of the, mm -hmm. the brown. Mm -hmm. So you definitely get different textures, whether you're doing kind of the positive or the negative version of it. Um, now, what's interesting about this is, th this is what I find fun, is you know laying different items down and pulling up different textures. But you can also um, brush work on there also. You could, you could actually paint, move, or add the, you could add the paint and then move it around with a brush or something like that. Create images that way, um, and then pick up the image. So that would be similar if you were doing like a monotype print on glass or something like that, laying the paint down and then picking it up with paper. Um, another thing you can do that I haven't tried yet, um, and obviously once you do this, you wouldn't be able to use the plate for anything else. But you could also create um, either a relief with this, carve out areas or cut areas off, or you could create um, more of like an etching, carving small lines in, so you could take, mm -hmm. oh. so you could take, um, um, I don't know if a pencil would work <laughs> quite right, but you could carve areas out, and then when you lay your paint down, it's going to go down into those areas, and that's going to be um, like if you were doing an etched plate, it's going to put out of those crevices, so that would be another way to do that. I suppose you could do that like a, in a 9 by 13 pan mm -hmm. and make yourself a yep. larger. Um, it just, part area. of what it depends on is um, you have to kind of plan out what you have room for in your fridge and what size paper you're using. Um, so, I mean, you wouldn't want your plate to be too much larger than the, the paper you're printing on, otherwise you're, you would just be wasting the, the gelatin. Because okay. um, basically, I think the gelatin, I mean, when you figure out price-wise, you're looking at like 50 cents a pack every oh, time. Yeah. So I used, I think it was 50 cents, so about $3 of gelatin for one of these, and this is a smaller one. Um, so I mean, it can it could add up if you're doing, you know, large pieces, and the larger they are, the harder they are to handle, too. So, um, but yeah, and you have to make sure that you have room to keep them in the fridge. Um, there are different recipes you can use that I haven't tried yet. Um, some people say you can add vinegar to try to help prevent mold from growing over time. Um, and I did see another one where you can make more of like a, I think they called it more of a plasticine version of this, where you add like glycerin and alcohol to it, and it makes it more of a firm gelatin to last longer. Um, there is a company that makes something called a jelly plate that's supposed to be like a permanent version of this where you still have a similar surface, but it's not something you would make by hand to purchase. So so there's different options for you know for how to create one or how to um, or purchase one if you want. So and then when you're, you're doing the freezer? Um, no, I don't think so. I found out the hard way. Um, last week I tried making one and um, I left it in the fridge for like a day or two, kind of forgot about it and I didn't hadn't wrapped it, and I had a layer like this of ice that formed on top. And um, when I tried, I thought, oh, I could probably just, you know, once it thaws a little bit, just peel the whole ice off. Well, that worked until I took it um, to go print on it, and there were water pockets everywhere. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> I went like this, and water starts squirting, <laughs> and, and then it just started cracking everywhere. Oh so goodness. I don't think you, I don't think you could freeze it. Um, I read somewhere somebody said that they had and had luck with it, but I think it would really depend on the specific recipe you use. Because I think what I used, there, it probably didn't have enough gelatin to survive being frozen. So. Northside Art Association is a nonprofit arts organization focused in Florissant, Missouri, that serves local artists through community exposure, networking, education, and peer interaction.